Are we starting now? I thought it was 1230. Yeah, yeah. Still Again, please <laughs> Hello, I am very honored and pleased to introduce the lead designer of the Commodore 128 and designer of the TED series and a very good friend to VCF, Bill Hurd. And I believe for the first time in person, a gentleman that Bill has mentioned many times in his talks, a chip designer, a commodore, and entrepreneur, Al Charpentier. Charpentier. Oh, I just screwed up. Charpentier. And the topic, the commodore, pick one and pick two chips. And thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Great. And with us is uh, Professor Stephen Edwards from Columbia, right? Yeah, yeah. Long, long time uh, lover of uh, 6502 and all things, all things 8-bit. Right. And, and we'll forgive the fact that you, you see beauty in apples. And, you know, <laughs> what, what are apples? I have no idea. <laughs> it's a 6502 based Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot. That's that. the beauty yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So
So my goal here was to uh, you know, set the stage a little bit. I have uh, oodles of, of technical questions for you. Um, but uh, uh, let's come on, there it is. OK, so um, spin your minds back a little bit. Uh, 1977, this was the, the Trinity that came out. We've got the, uh, we've got the, the, the PET, uh, the Apple II, uh, the, the TRS-80, uh, later called Model 1 or whatever. Um, so the TRS-80, pure black and white, uh, character mode display. It had one trick, which you, you had a bunch of characters that had, let's see, I think it was six, uh, essentially six pixels each. And so, you know, you could get like dancing demons and things like that. It was a bit primitive. Um, uh, the Apple II, this evil thing, uh, if you heard Burger <laughs> Becky's, Becky's talk, um, the color was actually, um, well, quite deliberate, um, but a very interesting, uh, it's essentially what happens if you uh, send frequencies at the, the NTSC uh, color burst uh, frequency. So the, the, the trick here is that uh, that actually had color and it was a nifty thing and so forth, uh, but brutally difficult to program. Uh, and then the PEP, uh, had this wonderful uh, Petsky uh, font built into it that you could do all kinds of crazy things. But again, it was sort of a, a, a character-based thing. We, we call the Apple an artifact generator. Oh, yeah. Because of the yeah. way the color was generated. <laughs> yeah. it was generated yeah. uh, uh, as you said, based on the interference with the frequency of the color burst. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's when a, when a frequency beats with another frequency, that's a moray. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And this is what we want. This is what I want to talk about. Right, right. So, so, um, well, so, tell us how the Vic One chip came about. Like you say, it did not start as the, as the part of the uh, of the Vic. Well, you didn't start as a Vic chip designer either. You yeah. started as a ROM designer. I was a memory chip designer. Memory chip. ROMs and, <coughs> and calculator chips. Right. Okay. Right. Because Commodore was big on calculator. They were the biggest, one of the biggest sellers of calculator chips. I started there in 75, and they were a calculator chip company. And the biggest, their biggest uh, customer was Commodore. Right. Commodore calculators were really big in Europe. So they were buying all the chips from, from them. And <clears throat> so um, at the same time, I always was interested in video. Okay. From, I video mean, was cool. Video yes. was still video. Video. Yeah, video. yeah, I mean, I remember waking up and, and, and seven or eight years old looking at the test pattern at five o'clock in the morning going, yes, yes. how did that get there? Yes. So it was always fascinating to me. In this, even though I designed ROMs and RAMs, since that was where somebody was paying me to do that, um, video games was, my, was, was one of the areas I'd love to figure out how to work with the video particularly. So I did a, uh, some ROMs for Atari. I remember the old... Um, Asteroid games. I had done a 64K ROM at one point, but the old Atari 2600 only had a 32K memory space. So they, were they couldn't fit asteroids into the ROM. So I said, wait a minute, I can make a bank switch that if they click a certain address, will flip over to another 32K. So and, and you have to be careful with that because that's a read access. That's a read access. Right. So that's like a landmine with a pin already. Yes. It, it, yeah. Really, and you had to be very careful that you didn't have any spikes or anything that was going on in there. Right. But at any rate, we put this in, and Atari went, yes, we can make this work. Mm -hmm. So they put the Asteroids game into it, and made a zillion Asteroid chips. Did you actually put the bank switch logic into the ROM chip yes. itself? So it's just a single chip. Yeah. Okay. So it was no different than any other cartridge they had. Sure. They just had the basic layers yeah. they needed yeah. to change yeah. back and forth. And so they would wait for the vertical staking time to be able to flip what they were going to do from one frame to the next. So that was the concept that, they, that was there. So it was my first time I actually got to play in the video game world. And right. it's funny, I made a little cartridge for my kids. And every, since we made all the video games in the ROMs, I had cartridges that the ROMs plugged into so my kids could play all the video games in the garden for free. That's wonderful. We had a really good neighborhood <laughs> house. Our house was very, very popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, from there, um, I still was interested in video. Now now what happened is MOS, but well, they did the, the 6502. 
to, right. and that changed the world as well. Right. Okay, and it, it, and Apple got involved with it and so forth. But then what happened was that it, it never caught on fast enough. The support wasn't there, and they lost it. They got into financial trouble. So then Commodore basically went, okay, we can vertically integrate. And that's when Commodore came in and basically worked. What year was that? Uh, end of 76, early 77, okay. roughly right around that time. Maybe, yeah, 77. Because Chuck Pedal had come in at around 76, and that's when 6502 came in, 75, 76. Right. About a year after I was there. Okay. Chuck Pedal and Will Mathis and, and that whole team came in, and, and Bill Lynch. They all came in for both. So, a, a question I had then was I had always thought that Chuck helped founded MLS, but that's not quite true. No. No. MLS was there, and there was Alan Bradley and Alan Bradley. Bradley. Yeah, MLS started in 1969. Okay. Okay, yeah, and it was Alan Bradley funded it, and John Pavanen and, oh, okay, I can't remember the other two gentlemen, Don McLaughlin, one of the guys I can't remember. They were the three founders of Alan Bradley. Okay. And so what ended up happening during, in that 77 era, 76 ish, Alan Bradley just stop funding it. I mean, they just, I mean, there was no future in semiconductor, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all industrial controls. Right, right, exactly. Resistors, what do we need? Right. <laughs> it was like mind-boggling, but that's the world that back then, okay? So, anyway, Commodore comes in and keeps continuing to make calculator chips, and I still wanted to do video. Okay, now, if anybody can remember the video typewriter, Yes. Oh, yes. Don Lancaster. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was fascinating to me. I said, okay, what can we do? How can I make this thing and I can do something that's malleable? Okay. And the aha moment was, okay, I'm going to turn the ROM that the character says in into RAM. Ah, okay. That was like, okay, and and I can I can make this work because if I put some ROM and RAM in there, then you can change the character set as you need. And then the object was, how do you get something to move across the screen? Well, I could make like eight or nine of them, or just step through them, and that would make it move, appear to move across the screen. Sort of like the old flip card thing. <laughs> right, right, right. That was, the, that was the concept of what we did. And so, so what, what other kind of graphics things? So at the, at the time, character graphics were, were reasonably well known. Um, the pet had the fix font. Right. Um, and so you would look at all these circuits and, and figure it out and so forth. But the, uh, well, let's see. How closely did you look at the uh, uh, the TV typewriter, actually? It used a very different technique of generating. I just looked at the fact that it was ROM. I knew it was doing, and okay. I didn't actually go into the okay. details okay. of it. Because I, yeah, yeah. I felt that architecturally, it really wanted to be more of like a processor kind of structure, fetch. Store, store manipulators yeah, yeah. and display. Well, it was, it was bizarre. It used a FIFO for the, which you can use, but right. you can't really write to it very often. Exactly. But anyway. You're, yeah. So that so it was the way of, and also the indirection structure of the 6502 went that it really well to be able to go and pick things out, change what character you were. Oh, that's only, yeah, yeah, yeah. Without and, random access. You know, you yeah. Trouble. Right. And yeah. FIFOs were a form of memory back then. That, that was the thing. Yeah. 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 There wasn't the big. Static RAM that we could access, uh, you know, vertically. Wherever well, they, they were cheaper. I, I was thinking about it. It's uh, all the wires are short. <laughs> well, most of the wires are short. Yeah. So, so I understand that the the goal originally with the what eventually turned into the what sixty five what is it uh, sixty the six, about sixty five sixty I think it was or yeah something. yeah or sixty one or something yeah something yeah like yeah. That. yeah. Uh, I've got numbers here. Yeah. Right there, so. It's amazing that we've forgotten the numbers because we used to live and die by those numbers. So now it's like six, six, five, five, six, 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 I've only ever heard you refer to them as the Vic One. Yeah. Vic One, Vic yeah, that's 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 These numbers were made up later. Um, so if I understand that the idea was originally, hey, we're going to build this this great chip, sell it to all these companies. They're going to make they're going to go and make uh, video game yeah. consoles off of it, and that didn't quite happen apparently. No. <laughs> Well, yeah, the object was we're going to make a video game and we're going to try to sell it to Atari or, or Coleco or right. Mattel, someone mm -hmm. that would make a video game. And, and we beat our heads against the wall for about a year and a half after the chip was done to try to get somebody to, to buy into it. And nobody would. 
And this, it, here's what ended up happening, okay? Now this is where another person of, of lore, a uh, friend of mine, Bob Yannis, I was interviewing, I wanted to fill out the staff, okay? The chip designers. Mm -hmm. So he was at Villanova finishing his senior year there, and he, I interviewed him, and he came into the office, and I showed him a, a, a 20 prototype that we had, which did a video kind of display and so forth. He said, oh, wow, you know, would you mind if I do my senior project on this? <laughs> I kid you not. Okay. So I said, sure, take it. You know, we have one to the take one home. So he did, he took one home, and uh, he did a senior project on it. And then after his senior year in May, we, we hired him, and he came in and he showed us this wonderful thing that he did. So literally, like, a few weeks later, Jack Tremiel was coming in, and we showed him this prototype, which was basically a VIC-20 where Dr. Bob had put a little operating system in there, you could type on it and so forth. Very rudimentary. Yeah, we never heard about the operating system part. Right, yeah, he had yeah. done a little operating yeah, just so he could type on it That's and cool. make it, and, and Jack went, I want that, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? And Chuck Peddle was called and he flew in and they had this big meeting and Chuck didn't mm -hmm. want to do it. Jack said, you will do it. <laughs> and, and, and ultimately, it moved so that the actual architecture moved out of MOS, and they did the architecture of the final big 20 in uh, Palo Alto. Oh, okay. um, Bill Silent. Bill Silent, yes. yes. And, and you have better names than I am. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, Chuck was very upset because of the fact that I had done that Phase one, phase two, DMA structure. Oh yeah, right. and which which is the lifeblood behind the Comgro products was, which and we kind of knew that, but you did it. Yeah, you you said, well let's do it times millions. Let's let's make these things share with us. <laughs> right. Everybody else was waiting for refreshes. They would wait to, to the dark period of the screen, make changes, and then get out of the way. And the beauty of what Chuck, uh, Chuck, yeah. well, it's, it's okay. The beauty <laughs> of what Albert did was they could sit there and simultaneously get to the same ramp. It's just your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. Yeah, yeah. it was truly the, the, the early, like, true DMA. Yes, so totally. So it was uninhibited. So the only thing you had to have was a memory that ran twice as fast as your right. processor or your video requirements. Yeah, yeah, and in fact, this is this is the hilarious thing. If you, if you plot uh, processor frequency over time versus memory frequency mm. over time, there was you, you hit the exact window where you could actually have memory faster than the processor, and that's not been true for 30 years. Right. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that this, was, this, was, this, this other Steve apparently did that on the Apple II as well, by the way. But <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's sort of a 60 well, it, it, See, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of the architecture of the competition. As, as, as strange as that may sound, we didn't examine it and say, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah you just, you, you just mock it. Yeah, no, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Literally, the breadboard was, but was, not, but not wire wrap. 
That's what I would have expected. Yes, it's wire. Oh, prior wrapped. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we actually, I put all of the pieces on there, and we had that made into a bunch, and then they wire wrapped it on the bottom. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. Because it was too hard to figure out all that. And you would probably get the power wire. Right, exactly. All right, so they wire wrapped that, and then, so I basically, it wasn't the full VIC-20, but I mean, and I can still remember that I had the color stuff where I had the, um, the, the uh, RAM working, the DMA for the RAM yeah. working and so forth, but I didn't have color yet. Mm -hmm. okay. And so they were really worried. That, and I literally <laughs> goes, well, you don't have color working yet. Right? Right. We can't let you do this unless you have color working. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, in my, in my experience, is that there's nothing easier than getting color working perfectly on NTSC. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Just, yeah. like, just, 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 just have to be right. Yeah. So, I spent a weekend cobbling together the color circuitry. And then that Monday, everybody, you know, the king, I remember the king came in and went, wow, you got it. And I said, and I said yeah. And then he said, all right, go do the chip. <laughs> so that's what I had to do to prove that I really did know what I was doing when it came to that, uh, that time. That was, I guess, in 76, I guess it was. Now, I assume you learned a lot while doing the breadboarding, too. Oh, of course. Well, yeah, exactly. But it was it was architecturally very clean in the fact you had just a bunch of registers, registers. that you were filling out, and you had forty registers, and you had twenty registers in this case. So, and you just fill them out as you go. Right. And then, yeah, so it was pretty much a simple. I don't think I had a full. I don't remember it was so long ago, but I was able to get the characters on the screen, which is all I wanted. Right. Okay. Prove that I could do. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> to me though, that's kind of the beauty. Of the uh, chip itself. I had I got some uh, uh, screenshots here. Oh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know, of course, you, you know, given the given the era, of course, you have to. Uh, how actually license Pac-Man apparently to oh. be able to do that? I thought it was just another little knockoff. Know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh, and you mentioned the smooth moving. Uh, it's it's kind of painful. All I have are these still images, oh, but yeah. in fact, the animation is the whole cat. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the, the the trick here is you still had these big fat characters, but you would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a, again, I always yeah. thought the card flipping thing is yeah, like, yeah. what you were doing essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so you have one finger. Here's another thing I found. Um, some of these people are still writing new games for this. They so are. Yeah, 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This oh, is, that's a ride. This is insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, during this time, when, where was the toy and the Ultraman? Was that after the big? That was it. One, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What was that last one? Yeah. So what I have here, yeah, this is okay. this is a die photo, and so this is this is the fashion these days to take oh, these yeah. chips and. Which one is that? Um, so I believe this is the big one. Okay. Um, I, you, you, you I have this out, out right? It's yeah. This is the sprite collision logic. No, that's <laughs> that's why. Right. 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 That's why. Right. 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 Yeah, that's what I. <laughs> So my understanding is that for uh, character graphics like this, it's mostly about counters and uh, horizontal and vertical counters and uh -huh. address generators and, and things like that. Yep. Um, and just looking at that, that's kind of vaguely what's going on here. Yep. You've, got, you've got a bunch of registers controlling the, the size and all the rest of that. Right. Yeah, because I mean, looking at a, at a TV screen as a digital structure, you just have so many pixels across and down, and you have to create the vertical blanking and the horizontal blanking periods. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, a really big counter and a lot of decode to set the different mm -hmm. plots, essentially, to create the signals. And with this, the, the DMA axis is really quite regular, right? It's fetch the, no, fetch the character, fetch the pixels, shift right. it out, go on right. to the next one. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right, that's going to change when we get to the uh, 664. Yeah, right, yeah, right. more complicated because you have to do a lot more stuff. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Hence the serial bus got slower. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> no, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So there's this magical little thing. So what's nice about the 6560, there's actually documentation because it looked like you intended to sell this at one point. Yes. So it's, it's vaguely public and so right. forth. But there's this, this magical uh, box down here, color to code. <laughs> and so I'm I'm curious what did go into the color. Okay, making all that look. All right. Well, it's it's 
and this is a riot too, because I knew about NTSC. Yes, that, that's 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 uh, in the Atari. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, what we had was how do you how do you control phase shift, which is what you had right. to do right. with the yeah. power. Mm -hmm. So, and this this is well before you had uh, Google on Wikipedia. I literally went to the library, the public library. I've heard of those. <laughs> yeah. To learn about what phase shifts I needed to create the various colors, okay, and then uh, you know, fortunately, the trigonometric equation. If you take a sine plus b sine, sure, and yeah. you create, a, and then in the case of creates a phase shift, tan to the a over b. So once you knew that, all you had to do is create a little resistor ladder network. So I took a square waves, which were 90 degrees, which, and then you basically. Uh, ran them through a resistor ladder network, which okay. created the summation of the amounts of one of each of those two. They, they were square waves. Well, and they were. I, I ran them through a filter. Okay, so you made it into a sine-ish wave. Right. Yeah. Okay. I made sine-ish. Sine-ish. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. And so that so that went into an op amp. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that basically, and then I just amplified it out to make sure that the, it was peaked correctly. And that then allowed me to make the colors. So by adjusting the resistors in the two um, uh, phases there, I could create any phase shift that I wanted. You were doing uh, uh, you were doing essentially two pulses per 3.58 megahertz. That was two three. It was 3.5 each yeah. one. Yes, two. Yeah, two of them. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, okay. So two yeah, of those. One delay by 90 degrees. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes good sense. Uh, yeah. Just add them up. And the thing at the time was, NMOS made lousy absolute values of resistors, yes. but the ratios could be set. All you needed was the ratio. Right, right. So as long as, and that was so, it, as long as the ratios were right, I could do that. I could yeah, I was going to say, at a video speed uh, DAC and op amp, that sounded a little bit beyond what a typical ROM designer would be doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news was that, but doing, doing memory was actually a good thing, because I had to work speed. Uh, I had okay. to get things to go fast. Oh, I to yeah, have a huge arrays and right. the capacitance right. of those big arrays. Right. And things, right. Exactly. And then and like the sense amplifiers. Oh, right. So all well, of that was very they, analog. They look digital on the outside, right. but, but there's, there's nothing digital. There's nothing inside. digital. Yeah. There's no okay. analog yeah. stuff <laughs> internally. So, so sense, having yeah. that speed really allowed me to, to, uh, to get to the colors from here. Okay. Do, do you have any recollection of you know bits and pieces on the die when, when, uh, while I have it up here? Is that, uh, is that too many chips ago for you? It's a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, the color was the hardest. It really was one of the hardest. I'm ones. sure. Yeah. Because uh -huh. doing the TTL version, act, as you said, really did force me to think the whole digital process through. And and and, and I remember we, I had back then again we didn't have the, uh, the stations to work on. So mm -hmm. I had this chart, literally it was about 12 feet long, of the entire time diagram. <laughs> from, from, from beginning of, of the top of the screen, to for all the signals, <laughs> an entire field worth of timing. Diagram. Correct. <laughs> By hand. <laughs> Where the decodes would have to occur. So you'd set the flip flop here, reset it there. <laughs> yeah. and, and you, so I, I've got to make this joke. I'm glad. I'm sure at this point you were glad you were in North America, not Europe, right? Because it's, you, you've got a oh, slightly like smaller. Yeah. Right. Okay. You got a slightly smaller design. Yes. <laughs> That's honest. Wow. We had to do the PAL version as well. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say it, it yeah. caught up to in the end. Yeah, it did. But yeah, that was, it was, uh, but there was no other way to do it. You, you didn't sure. have simulators. Yeah. And, and, uh, That's why I was going to ask you, you, you could only simulate one horizontal line, I think you said. Yeah. And the simulation was spice, no digital simulation. No, it was all deck of cards, or at that, that time, a teletype. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Big, big I think it was hard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> transistors was one driver going to have. 
And if anybody remembers the HP calculators of 65 with the little dipsticks in them, this is really going back. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I programmed one of those so that I would be able to say, okay, this one's going to drive this many, the size of transistors, which is this much capacitance. And then I would put that in, and it would then spit out the transistor size necessary oh, wow. in order to wow. create a rise wow. time of a certain nice. number okay. of nanoseconds. So that way I sped up, right. I simulated it on a second. So I sped up the process so I could figure out the transistor sizes. This needed. is great, you were on your own EDA tool. <laughs> <laughs> but so once you did that, then this whole thing got compiled into what you're showing here. Mm -hmm. And that was where we did have some computer aid. This was the, the, the big Calma uh, counter plot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they were digitizing those still on the on the big drawing boards and using the digitizer, or were they using the tablets at that time? Ah, uh, no, still on the big board. Big board, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I heard the people complaining about shoulder pain at the end of the day from <laughs> sitting there doing this all day long. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, were they still cut? They weren't cutting rivulets. The more it is really let go away. I know it, we did it for the 6502 Ruby list, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we did. I think Ruby list was gone right. at this time. I, I okay. think had a bit so Ruby list for everybody is actual red film that they would actually cut and photographically make it small enough to make the chip out of. But it started by hand cutting film. Yeah. So we, although the, uh, I think with the Kalman systems, uh, they actually used essentially a pen plotter, but with a knife. Correct. Yeah. So it, oh, would okay. So okay. They, they would. I'm sure there were manual touch-ups and so forth. Yeah. But yeah. this was kind of the reason they used the. You're right. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. So it, was a, yeah. it was a thing. that was basically an eight by eight pool table size thing with a, with a cutter on the right. right. on the next wide pen line. Yeah. And and when you were all mm -hmm. done, so I think we cut it all out, and then we would have what we call a peeling party. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to tweezers and you peel up the areas that were going to be exposed. So it was it was half automated. Right, right. 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 But that's the right. It still needed to be photographically reduced. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. this is in a huge camera that had a camera the size of a room. It had a wow. plenum on a chamber yeah. on it, yeah. like uh, eight feet by eight feet, and they'd hang this ruby lip on it, and they'd shoot it down to this size, I mean whatever, two by two or something. Mm -hmm. And that's what they used to make the posters, which we would then use to check that all the peeling was done correctly and all the transistors were right and so forth, okay? And then they take that and then shoot that down to the final size for the number of the chip. So how long did it take you to check the big chip then? Because in my era, they would sit there for months with their little scales, rulers, and, and sit there and measure it. No, I, I didn't measure it, okay, okay, because of the fact that I tried, I was very consistent about the, the Everything was a digital size, so right. I knew that it was, I could tell eyeball why right. big things. So it's interconnected. Right. right, I was purely 100% interconnected. Okay. It, okay. it took a month. Okay. And literally, right. you have a, I had a plot that was 12 feet by 12 feet, falling on it for days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts. But it was, I mean, but I was driven. Yeah. 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 Well, you saw the color at the end of the tunnel. Mm. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, it went on to take take the world by, by storm. Yeah. Oh, one of the things I came uh, across, and one of the things I found uh, very unusual about the Big 20 is it used um, static RAM chips, 2114s, if I remember. And I don't know, I, I, from what I was reading, it was claiming, oh, uh, they had a surplus of these. And so Jack said, oh, we got to dump these into them. Any, any idea whether that uh, story is true? I don't know if that's true or not. I, I, got it, I designed the RAM chip that's in there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, okay. Well, that's, so that to me is, is first and foremost as a system designer, if we could use a Commodore part, we yeah. absolutely did. Oh, sure. Because yeah. we could control the timing on it. And this was back in days of allocation where you, you could hold up the production line. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. so, so, okay. so I didn't realize really you did the RAM chip. Yeah, I did the RAM chip. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this thing had a whopping five kilobytes in it. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you, I'm, I, nice binary number there, Alan. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, it's great. You can help multiply by four. Right. Yeah. 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 Very, very nice. But yeah, there's, there's sort of almost nothing there except a lot of, a lot of your RAM chips. Right? Yeah. A lot of heat yeah. generation so going on there, too. I noticed those heat sinks. 
Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's a nice one. Well, yes. Um, you know, before we got uh, switching power supplies. Yeah. Anyway, so this thing took the the, the world by storm, or at least a, a, a little bit. But of course, you couldn't rest on your laurels. Give us our TI killer. Is how I heard. Did you guys ever hear it called that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There was. There was. I mean, Jack had a saying. The business is war. You right. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. Right. Yes. And 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 he really took that to heart. Yes, he did. Okay. I mean, you were you know literally we were at a target TI. So wait, the oh, the big twenty was targeting TI or the or the next one? Um. Well, the next one was going to target TI. Okay. Oh, I got told. We yeah. called the next one the Apple Killer. Oh, okay. Um. So the I, I mean, it was like a lot of different names. Killers. Yes. I would have yeah. But it was, was, was the TRS eighty. Was yeah. Trash eighty and the and the yeah. uh, as we refer to it and then everybody TI yeah. Yeah. right and uh, that's but. Apple really was never on the radar. It wasn't on anybody's radar because no. they were in a different market space. They were more in the business market space, not the consumer market space. Yeah. So yeah. they never really looked at Apple as a as right. a. As a they, they were smart. Yeah. Went after the schools, yes. which we never did. Oh, correct. Yes. yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Crazy thing. And, uh, that's a whole nother whole other topic. Other chapter. So okay. yeah, absolutely. That's absolute. for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> So, but it wasn't time to rest on your laurels. Um, let's see. So, let's see. The 99th floor came out yes. um, somewhere in between that, and it had this marvelous sprite thing, the 9918 uh, sprite processor in it. Right. And so, you had seen that and said, "I wanted one of those." Or yeah. Well, it was it was the fact that while the Vic 20 allowed you to do some level of video gaming, it wasn't good enough. Right. Right. I mean, it just, I wanted more. <laughs> we all did. Right, exactly. So, the, I mean, the 8-bit processors just never had the power to, to do anything moving random memory around in the space. So you could watch it scroll. That's, that's the days you could watch the screen scroll. Yeah, and it, so there was really no simple way to allow you to move more characters and, and randomly move them smoothly. So, the sprite thing from the TI was like, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you decide how many sprites? Okay, that was a function of, we could only make a chip that was so big that we knew we'd have a yield. Sure. Okay, I forget what 200. You, you, you were almost had, had, had right. limited size, almost. Almost, yeah, yeah. It was a little yeah. bigger than that, but right. not much. I mean, we knew that based on the defect density and the fab, a chip that this size is about as big as you would want to go in order to be able to reasonably yield. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember the yields on the big one? Like 20%? No, it was higher than that. Way higher? It was in yeah. the 30 well, 40% range. Okay. When, yeah. though, right? You know, the first well, that's why I'm asking the big one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, but, you know, I'm sure as they, the process over time, they got it better. Oh, it's, it's, it's oh, like yeah. baking. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like yeah. not only chemistry, but baking. Art in how they oh, make it is the way I always look at it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. the recipe. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and they got in a lot of trouble when they messed the recipe up. I, I, I just, they would go oh, looking for the guy that ruined the batch. You're right, yeah. you would throw the batch. So let's see, did they, did they fire him or just shoot him? They fired <laughs> him. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. I remember one guy writing the thing, I'm sorry, I ruined the batch. I won't do it again. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would have assumed it'd be a lot harsher. It, it was definitely a little bit of uh, well, a so this yeah. this number of eight sprites on a line, which is a very very fixed hardware restriction. This is this is kind of at the heart of the chip in many respects, right? Yeah. So you've actually got a patent yes. uh, on this, and this this was uh, the least technical diagram uh, that it had. It also had uh, uh, you know, things with the uh, MOSFETs on them. So right. Um, but this whole thing, if I understand, is making the decision of, okay, I'm at a pixel, which of the eight sprites yes. is visible or is the background, right? right. right. Yep. And so why, why is that the heart of the chip? Oh, because you have so many decisions to make at that split second in time. Mm. Okay, so you've got to say, okay, I've got a background, do I want to display that? And the background was pretty fetched, so I knew that that was a stream that was coming down. So now you've got, also you've got the data from each of the sprites, it's also a so now all you're doing is waiting for the timers to click over. And now once that happens, you have a decision to make as the streams are going out. To say, okay, which one am I going to display? And a priority for those. Okay, that was where it had a sprite priority list here. And then you were able to select background and foreground. So all of that had to go through the big logic.
logic tree. That is really crazy. Right. And so that allows you to make things flow nicely. Put things, make them visible, make them appear. Um, so there was a lot. That was because realistically, it was the Vic, that was the heart of the change from the Vic Twenty to the Vic Two. Because but because the rest of it was just doubling everything else in the Vic One for the back for the for the, for the, for the back. The sprites was the, the heart of the system at the time, mm -hmm. and um, it was a complicated piece of logic. Yeah, I'll yeah. Tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I yeah. see why you would get a uh, patent on it. Definitely. So you say it, it has to go fast. How fast was it? Did it have to go at the time? Oh my goodness, we were going. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so slow today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, so it was literally about. Um, we're running at about two megahertz, as I recall, internally. Well, let's see. Well, so it's it, 500 nanoseconds. It would have been the uh, two old point. It would have been the pixel yeah, speed. The pixel speed, right? correct. Yeah, yeah. I, so I thought that was more like eight. I thought it was no, four. Four, four. It four. was four. 250 nanoseconds. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Eight. We started with eight. I divided that by two. Yeah, oh, eight point one eight divided by two. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So that was the uh, the pixel rate. So it was a, yes, it would be the 250 nanosecond decision. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty pretty heady for that time. For that time. So what you end up having to do is pipe one decision process. So you can only go through so many stages of logic. And then I would face stop off and stop it in the pipeline, put, yeah. put a flip flop in, okay, collect that information, then we'll go to the next series of logic. So the whole thing would shift in space a little bit. Oh, so even even the priority logic had the pipeline make yes. it work. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So then yeah. then you had to go, okay, now if I want this to appear here, that means it has to be actually back yeah, in time. You have to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you couldn't look at eight things at once. You could only look at two or three, right. and then two or three more, and then two right. or three more. Time. It got, mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was just a speed. Function, you just couldn't go fast enough to get it all done in one shot. That makes good sense. So Albert did all his work in what NAND gates, NOR gates, exclusive NOR gates, inverters, and pass devices. That's, That's all it. you had in your bag of tricks. That was it. Yeah. You really couldn't go more than a four input. Uh, right. NAND. The voltage stars uh, would get a. Yeah. This, was, this was all NMOS or NMOS. Yeah. Okay. That's why it was, was power on. Oh, I'm sure. Well, yes. uh -huh. I, mean, I mean, we were running at eight megahertz back then. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, what do we do with all this heat? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, boy. It, was, it, it got so hot. It was yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, sh they, sh they shifted this. Uh, uh, they, they ripped off the, the but they, but the heats, But heat sinks and fans and so forth were still a decade off. And you couldn't put this in consumer devices. No, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the heat thing was really, this was one of those aha. Uh -huh, like, I'm the guy from the chip sitting in that box there, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, since that was creating most, a lot of FCC noise, we did put that in a metal right. box, okay, to pass mm -hmm. FCC. The problem is, again, I'm putting it in the box that got even hotter. Mm -hmm. So somebody, we had this wonderful idea of, put, of, of, of welding the little tab okay. <laughs> to the lid in order to get some heat sink function <laughs> down on the back so we could get the heat off and keep the thing alive. Without that tab, it, it would it would overheat. Years later, we were still doing tabs on everything. <laughs> <laughs> still the way to do it. It was it was like oh god. How we didn't want to just heat up the inside of the computer either, so the the tab tube melts. And so then melted something else. So I I've, I've heard of this this heat sink concept that I've seen it used in certain other computers. Right. Um, but uh, what was the deal? Uh, aluminum was too expensive at the time, or. Uh, well, we just blend it back into an EMI shield, yeah. so we needed something yeah. to yeah. block the EMI. Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, the, speaking for the 128, which is just huge, that thing cost me gosh, 20 cents to have stamps set. Some <laughs> simple, small yeah. little amount. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Fix, fix my heat problem and do FCC shielding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. yeah. I'm all there, right? Okay. 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 That was yeah. the People don't like it 40 years from now. <laughs> 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 So I'll ask the same question about the, the, the die, and I, I apologize. So uh, one of the things that's always been interesting to me is how successful Commodore was uh, uh, in Europe, especially Germany. And so right, forth, yeah, which right. I never quite now I understand they had the sales channels from from before. Mm -hmm. um, and right. So I apologize. This might actually be a PAL big two chip instead of the NTSC, which is what we're going to be talking uh, about. But I assume they're pretty similar. Oh, so yeah. Well, just the, just the uh, few numbers. Just yeah, the, the, the color and color. Right? Yeah, the color and color is a little different, and the. Uh, yeah, the counter points are right. Other than that, so. do you, uh, can you can you 
guide us through any of the larger sections of this, or is it already too far? Is it uh, too that's far? a little bit being past. My, my memory banks are not that. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, but I wish they were, but the, they're a little bit. The main there. thing you see, though, is now there's a huge sea of gates, right. kind of in the middle, and that's the Sprite Lodge yeah, Times. Ah, uh, okay. This right. is the. This is the this Whereas the, stuff. the big one looked like a bunch of disparate functions. This thing has this huge thing at the bottom there. And mm -hmm. You see the distribution going into it, trying to. And if you stop and count, you'll probably count eight of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, but it's pretty easy. Now, in, in, the, in the Chroma stuff up in the top right corner, and for, I don't know why I think that. I could be wrong. Right. But for some reason, I because I used to bop in while the guys were working on it. I just for some reason I want to say the color was up there, mm -hmm. maybe yes. because of the pin numbers. Yeah, that is exactly okay. right. Cool. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Do a similar trick with the resistive ladder or the two pieces. Okay. No reason to change it. It's working fine. Okay. Did, yeah. did yeah. you red board this one first? No, they, they trusted me this time. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you got this to work essentially on the first rep. You, you shared with me you had to make one tweak. You yeah. got this to work on the first rep. Yeah, the, 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 it was one, one arm with the sprite logic. And wow. it, this, this is a crazy story, too, because I got it in like November of 81. And got the chip, putting it under. And back then, the, the, the line lengths were big enough, wide enough that you could actually what we call microprobe them, all right? Right. Micro right. manipulator. We had this uh, tungsten needle that you would dip in acid to make it really pointy, so you pull it real slow, <laughs> and a really tiny point on it. And you put this on these calipers, vernier, mm -hmm. and then it, you would literally go to the microscope and, and look at a line. They remove the glass passivation, so you could go out and actually probe the thing with an oscilloscope. Right. And I found the logic in the line and knew what the fix was. So we had to go to Jan we had to go to the CES, which was the first week of January in nineteen eighty two. Right, you have to do it first. Yeah. January eighth or something. Mm -hmm. So we got a fix. We cut the ruby lid, did all no that we didn't have the ruby lid back then. So we basically they cut it, they went through the mask, it hit the fab like right before Christmas. Okay, and they had people come in over the Christmas holiday to move it from from fab to, from, from station to station. I got the chips like on January second, plugged them in, they worked. <laughs> <laughs> and we walked to CES, we went. <laughs> and, and it's significantly <laughs> different than the Vic One oh, for new stuff. I mean, you, yeah. like you said, the DMA and right. you know, these other character modes, multicolor character modes, and all and, those things. Were and they all worked. Three, yeah, it, it all worked. Oh. Yeah. How many modes are there? I don't know. I don't remember. Andy, do you remember how many <laughs> modes are in the picture? <laughs> no. Some, some number from 40 years ago. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. At least four. At least four. <laughs> At least four. <laughs> Back and look 
Yeah, so how does, how does 64 start? It was, it, by the way, that was urban legend where you guys said, no, Jaxos building, right? So did the same thing happen on the 64? We got kind of the, the you, you took the VIC-2 chip. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Okay, so when the VIC-2 VIC chip, chips, I started to design on that before the, 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 the VIC-20 was successful at Sheriff's time, okay? Because, again, frustrated you couldn't sell the VIC-1 to anybody to do a video game. Clearly it wasn't good enough, so let me do another one, all right? So nobody said no. <laughs> and in the midst of designing that, um, the VIC-20 took off. Okay, so we pivoted from there may be a better video game with a VIC-2 chip. We're going to focus on making it the next generation computer VIC-2. Mm -hmm. So uh, that really focused it on that. And, and originally, uh, there was, I think the original VIC-2, we only had like, I think it was less characters in the line, kind of like 32. Right, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But okay. I said, okay, we're going to make this computer, it's got to be 40. Because I knew that you couldn't get any more of it on the screen. And, that and was so your dot, top, dot clock changed frequency. Right, and I went to the 8 megahertz because I couldn't get fast enough right. at the 3 and a half. Yeah, yeah. At the three and a half. yeah that, this right. was, uh, I, I was tempted to put up, uh, so I think uh, Scott Adams' Adventures uh, was one of, the, one of the early things that was up there, the big 20 and so forth. And you could imagine for reading a text adventure on, on the 22 uh, column. Yes. <laughs> that was always frustrating. I was sort of impressed, yeah. So I, I, I could like, see why ah. you want to do that. that yeah, I, I really I wanted to get more, but you couldn't get it on a TV set. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. you got the 64, so you got the chip in the 60, who did, you designed the 64 around the VIC 2 chip, correct? Yeah. Uh, that is myself, with really the, the, the architects of the Right. Which, which is an amazing thing because, uh, speaking as a systems designer, you're a systems designer, you're a chip guy that needs systems design, yeah. and you knew how your chip needed to be used in the system, down to the smallest detail because you did the whole system. Right. That, that, that to me is just... Well, I, I think that that, I'd like to refer to that as really understanding the application that your chip design is going to go into. And, and today, that's what, if you look at what the semiconductor industry is, with the exception of, of GPUs, you, you really have all the peripheral chips that people do that are looking at the end application and designing the chip to do that. And, and then this was, a, was an early recognition of that right. and, and recognizing that you're going to have to, in order to get the cost and the, the process down, you really have to know where your, your whole system is going to be. So mm -hmm. the good news was, sort of after I started the VIC-2 chip, we knew that the VIC-20 was a success, so therefore we did everything necessary to make it not just a video game player, but a, a computer that would have some power. And, and you know, everyone, the, the story is pretty well known that, that we, we actually had designed the thing with 16K of RAM to begin with, mm. dynamic RAM. And we, we nearly had the Commodore 16. Yeah, it was nearly the Commodore so 16. Who wanted 64K, I asked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Jack Trio. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. and that was a marketing position. I remember being in, in the meeting and, and, and discussing where we were at and we were giving him an update and it was going to be 16, 16K and so on. And he goes, well, you know, I, I really think that we need to push it hard and I think 64K is really going to be available. The price point is going to be, by the time we get there, right. the price point will be reasonable and we just got to go for it and, and it'll, mm -hmm. be, it'll be a big splash. So that's when we changed it to a 64K system. Okay. Yeah, so it was and, and sort of, go ahead. It certainly meant DRAMs at the time. Uh, well, so even, even so the 16K would be yeah, yeah. yeah, so fortunately, architecturally, it wasn't that big of a change. We just had to obviously add another address, a couple yeah. address mm -hmm. bits. But um, it, it wasn't a, uh, a big, well, the timing between the 16K and the 64K were very similar. Had you, yeah. uh, so the 6502 doesn't have uh, DRAM refresh built in. Unlike the Z80, which one of those competitors were using, right. <laughs> uh, you would add the, the DRAM uh, control and refresh to the. Well, the refresh happened automatically because of the fact that the video was in the back. Ah, okay. So you refresh as a freebie. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. how convenient. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think we had to still do something. Like when we blanked the screen, we had to still yes. refresh DRAM. Oh, okay. yeah, there was some, you know, something going on in there. I forget what it was, but mm -hmm. the, it was okay. pretty yeah. free, but the counters were there. The graphics is friendly to DRAM refresh. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But the DRAMs have a whole nother timing, though, too, because they don't quite, yeah, he just moaned. <laughs> um, the DRAMs don't quite line up 
Not the 65. The 65. Ah, sorry, to, I, I remember what 60, why it's 21 foot wide sprites. Why? Because uh, that's a, you did a 64 byte fetch to get the sprite image. Yeah. You know, 63 bytes and then one that you had to waste time on. And that's 21 by 24. Yeah, okay. But as I said, I knew it had something to do with the pipe volume. Yeah. It is binary.
So we had to clean it up for production, and I put this stuff in. The really, now we have really 40 characters and no crossover between them. Mm -hmm. And it came out, we plugged it in, and it had a shimmer. So did you have two independent crystals? Yes. Ah, okay. I had yeah. two independent crystals, and they were drifting, and the screen had this ghosting and shimmering. Nice. Oh, it's really uh -huh. ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and I was going, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, and I still use that term, the you know, moments when you have a design, but not the right. right. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, you couldn't have predicted it without well, a I just right. didn't know. Yeah they're, yeah, they're pretty rare. Most of the time it's like, oh, that's awful. Why is that? Whereas an oh shit moment is exactly, you can realize just how deep it is. Right. To do it. And I'm really deep in it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this yeah. thing was supposed to go to production in May. <laughs> And I changed the counter scheme, um, <laughs> and I'm in trouble. <laughs> so, anyway, um, there's a guy uh, who worked at the company called Bob Side, and he had worked um, for a, I think, Motorola, and he went, oh, we can fix this with a phase lock loop. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't know what a phase lock loop was. Right. That was an evil analog. Even yeah. <laughs> <laughs> memory design. Yeah. 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 So he basically then one up and you know a little part and, and wire wrapped it, plugged it in, and it worked. Okay. So I have to give him a lot of kudos for, for, for and, that. And it's an LS VC. I mean, it's an LS phase lock loop yeah. part of it there. Yeah. It was it was pretty pretty interesting stuff that he was able. Uh, we, we, had to tune it right, but yeah. once the once the dot clock and the color phase clock were synchronized, yeah. then you had no problems and it worked yeah. beautifully. Okay. So that was a band-aid. It's actually it, uh, so the function of the phase lock loop here actually is very simple. Uh, it divides by seven, then multiplies by four. And the issue is how do you build a piece of circuitry that multiplies the speed of the clock? And the answer is you build a voltage control oscillator. Look at results and then you tune the, the frequency that comes out based on, oh, that came a little too early, came a little too late. Constantly uh, feedback. Fine. Right. It's, yeah. a, it's a feedback thing. It's very, very complicated. And incidentally, you can also use these things to tune FM stations. It, it's an FM detector. Right. But this is a steaming pile of logic. <laughs> you do not want in your cheap <laughs> And, and you're going to production. And, and you're going into production. production and right. Oh, God. Yeah. And, and you're going to have to pass uh, STC. Yes. Right. 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 And so, on, by the way, you've got this, this analog oscillator operating at you know, a few megahertz or whatever. You, you, you do have a nice disciplined crystal up here right. in the lower right. All the rest of this stuff. Um, and, you know, seners and charge pumps and phase detects. And oh, stop it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, and I can still remember it, so I had to make the fix and, and put this thing together, and then eventually the word of, of this problem filters up to Jack Tremiel. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you didn't run to him right away to show him? No, I didn't. I did that. You brought him a solution. Yeah, yeah, I went, yeah. Well, we have a problem, but here's the fix. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we had to add the circuitry to it, and, and, um, and he got, so anyway, <laughs> yeah, I can still remember, like, Standing up and ready to jump at me across the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. You could have cost us this company. <laughs> He's right. right. Yeah. 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 I said, yeah, well, but, but we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was all 29 years old. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I was, I was 24, 25. Yeah. I mean, it well, was, let's see. You, you were 29 before you went into the office. <laughs> what were you doing after? Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely one of those, how are we going to get out of this mess? And uh, wow. fortunately, this was a good band-aid that worked great. Yeah, yeah. solved the problem. Well, well, the, the was there any production problems with it? Or? Was there any production <laughs> problems with the big chip guys? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they did a tiger team. You can correct me, and I'm, I'm looking at Andy. Uh, yeah, I know. I am. I say Andy. Yeah. Yeah. They, these guys had to clean up my mess. Mm. So well, one trick I'll, I'll talk, to, talk about real quick was we had light blue flicker on dark blue, right? And they made it, which is the, the home screen has light blue characters on dark blue. And in a character cell, the part of the DRAM cycle got botched, it collected, select the foreground color instead of the background color. 
So light blue snow everywhere. It looked, looked like crap. Um, what they did is they went in and changed the characters in the cells that are supposed to be dark blue. They made the foreground and the background color both the same color of dark blue. So it's still flickering, but it's flickering dark blue on dark blue. So it, even on the oldest ones, if you look, if there's a cell with a character in it, you'll see like some dots getting into that cell too, but the rest of the screen is, is pretty blue. So and that was ram timing problem? Yeah, we had some ram timing problems. <laughs> 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 we, we, we. <laughs> well, how, you, how could you expect? He didn't design the D-RAM. I just the s -ram. Well, so another story, because I ended up in the bucket for what we called uh, where you babysat production for the C64. And uh, Micron DRAMs we had a big problem with, and it was sensitive in certain positions, the end of the row. And the problem was both of us. They weren't making the DRAMs right, and we weren't quite using them right, and it showed up in two locations on the board. And so we got better at it. And, and they, they, you know, Diorio got in and changed some of the timings and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we worked through a couple. It mostly did the heat out. We went to the really top, yeah. heat, right. uh, copper uh, lead frame. Got more of the heat out, and a lot of the problems, I don't want to say fix themselves, so, but, but move back it, into it. Right, yeah, because it, it got so hot, the part would slow down. And, and, and yeah. that, I mean, we used to see that when, when before a heat sink, it would spark, the screen would start to sparkle. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sparkle effect on the screen, it was just terrible. But Although, yeah. I, I, I actually teach students to build the stuff we use, FPGAs and so forth, but one of the things I always loved about working on the graphics part there is that the bugs were visible. visible. <laughs> yeah, 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 you could Good just look point. at it and it's, yeah. wait, that's not supposed to shimmer. Right? That's, that's not supposed that, to flicker. That's supposed to do that. So yeah. it's been true time of immemorial. Right, the difference being you didn't bet the whole company on it. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did we, or how are we doing on time? Uh, we're doing okay on time. We've got another half hour. Oh, uh, do we? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been pushing here and it's, it's actually worked pretty well. Okay. Um, uh, a very technical question I have is so you have eight sprites, period. Now the the TI ninety nine four A's chip, the ninety nine eighteen, uh, I think actually had thirty two, but you could only do four per line, and it was doing much more elaborate DMA to sort of fill the shift registers and so forth. And so I'm curious why the why the architectural shift, or whether that was deliberate, or whether that was it was deliberate. I mean, it was it was a matter of what I felt was if I could make a bigger spread. Okay. And that's where the idea of the uh, interrupt ones on the raster, yeah. that yeah. really was a thought process where I said, okay, if I make these things big enough, you can put a big enough article and you can combine two or three of them get really something elaborate sure. that you can move around. Mm -hmm. And then if you, once you've finished using it, then you can get an interrupt, change the pointer, right. and now you can have another one displayed. So having eight, again, was a function of how big I can make the chip, mm -hmm. but then the raster interrupt function allowed you to reuse them on the second screen once it was once it was actually used to make sense. So I felt that again it was a it was a it was, mm -hmm. a, it was a, an architectural workaround since I couldn't get more than eight to fit on the chip anyway. You, you could reuse your cloud sprite as a car sprite. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That one that was just a single pointer and change your uh, words. Okay. Now were you were you sucking in the entire it sounds like you were sucking in the entire yes. sixty four byte sprite mm -hmm. um, when? Beginning of each line? Um, no, it's, um, once yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Every eight lines. Every eight lines. Right. Yeah, that would slam out a DMA. Right. Oh, okay. Eight, 64. Oh, okay. okay. Which, which is why then we went from the 1540 disk drive to the 1541 disk drive. The serial bus timing had to allow for the big chip to take over for that entire line at 53 micro, 60 microseconds, whatever it is. Right. You you would go ah me <laughs> I'm taking which, over. Which which by the way the 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 big chip is a cruel mistress. <laughs> she she runs the chip once you set her up. It's it truly is the heart of the system. It's calling all the shots yes, in there, right. and the processor is just there to like go go oh, go left go left. Yeah, yeah but mm -hmm. it's the big chip doing the work. Yeah, that was the. the I mean, again, because the video defined right, the yeah. hard functions yeah. that we were doing, and everything else was insular. Were, you, were you no longer using the uh, even odd uh, oh, cycle trick? Yeah, but it still oh. wasn't enough bandwidth. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So right. when it got really intense, right. you said, okay, see. Mine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 he was. Well, he always won. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was actually one of the bigger things I was thinking about. So we did not put a 6502 in the 
Commodore 64. It's a 6410. 6510. Yeah. Or 6510, excuse me. Um, and so, let's see. So one of the big changes was uh, you could say, okay, 6502, you don't get to play with the address. Um, try state your address for us so you could do it. So you could actually do the DMA yeah, right. and, and all the rest of it. And it sounds like you could also tell it, you know, wait, don't do another cycle. Yes. And so forth. Okay. So it really, it really did. He really would stop cleanly, too. He, yeah. he yeah. wouldn't stop and botch the last cycle. He'd go, okay, here's, <laughs> yep. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was, that, yeah, was, that was a key to the just. Yeah. I, I was doing the serial bus, but sure, I'll stop. And okay, that makes yeah. sense. Just yeah. hung it up, essentially. Yeah. There was really no other elegant way to do it. No, yeah. but that yeah. was elegant. Well, it was yeah. the only way yeah. I could come up with at the yeah. time. It was, it, that that, that, that yeah. was DMA in the, in the modern sense of it, I would say. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it was. Because yeah. it's like, okay, hold off, yeah. and then start up again. And you thought of an implementer, and it worked, and you sold millions. I mean, that to me is that whole chain of events. Go that minor little thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. millions. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, my, yeah, my, my, my mind is just blank. Yeah, I know. I lost my chain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's probably a lack of refresh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be complimentary here. But, you know, <laughs> so, and you, you got the big two. So the big one you got working in one rev, or the first rev worked, and the big two took for two. Well, two, and then my my deciding to make the movie character. Okay. Yeah, right. Nice. Right. I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Nice little fix. Yeah. But I, I think it was a worthwhile. I think we all think. Yeah, that I really you no. Know, yeah, it was it was definitely taking the shot, taking some chances, but. Eh. <laughs> so one of the things that's cool in the in the Commodore 64 is you've got that uh, quad bipolar pass device for the color. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was not a typical hardware engineer. I mean, we knew about this part. We loved this part, actually. <coughs> um, but uh, 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 Albert built in, a, a, for the color RAM, instead of the logic that says, oh, I'm going this way, I'm going that way, is it your turn, is it my turn? He made it a t pass device and said, if you can get there, it's yours. Yeah. That's basically what it's saying. So in the 128, I looked at it and said, well, let's see what the logic would be like to make that a true, you know, no, go this way, go that way, stop it. I looked at it and we could do it. I said, no, better the way it was. And we, it was we, so cheap. It was one chip so and it worked. Yeah. And I didn't have to worry about compatibility yeah. with, with the 64. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so pass transistor is something that you get to use in a chip. Right. Okay. It's, it's the Part just goes through. It. Yeah. The part of so what is in MOS technology. So what was in the what was in the color RAM? Is this the palette? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the four bit color. Four bit four color. color. Right. Because right. okay. again, I didn't have enough bandwidth of things, and I said, okay, where am sure. I going to get the color from? Yeah. yeah so you made a twelve bit out. address bus. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And that was connected up by a to a little less RAM. Right. I need a little. I need one, one more. All oh, right. Yeah. 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 yeah.
I mean, it's almost like an instruction set kind of a thing, but a fixed instruction sure, set. Sure, sure. You, you had, okay, yeah, I'm picturing the 6502, the and way that, it That was what I used as a sort right. of a mental model as to how the I can see the left to right flow in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's very much a 6502 architecture, so essentially mm -hmm. you have a line, and, and now you have, what if you have to think of a line as an instruction set, how things are going to do with each one. Okay. So as the data is streaming out, you have these, this information that's going to say what happens at each particular instant. Mm -hmm. So that's what the flow structure would look like. Because in that way, you didn't, I, if I had the time, I could put more, more price in. Because sure, there's sure. a flow structure rather than fixed and timing and that I can have these fixed structures. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and that made it very malleable so that I could manage the whole process. Mm -hmm. So that, okay. that's why I architecturally considered it. Okay. Yeah, that makes, that makes good sense. Do you, do you remember the Ultramax? The Ultramax? No, no, no. So the 64 is compatible with the Ultramax. Okay. So you build in Ultramax compatibility. I didn't know that. I know <laughs> that because I had to build in Ultramax compatibility. Oh, okay. so I share <laughs> we, we shared make an Ultramax mode, oh, okay. which was like a 2K RAM only as the level. Oh. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Because we broke it one time. <laughs> That's how I know it. That's how you know that. Dave, do you remember breaking Ultramax mode? Oh, yeah. Well, that was all, it was all, it was pretty much all the PGA, right? I mean, it was like, it the, was in the PLA. Yeah, the PLA. The PLA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which wasn't really PLA at all. It was a custom chip. But. Yeah, yeah, we made it into 48 frames. Yeah. Well, I know you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was, that was another thing. I you didn't have 48. I, it was 48 pins. pins. No. It did not exist then. It was no. 40, that was it. There was nothing bigger than 40 pins. So, so that was another problem. Right, and we talked about, like, the colors, you know. If I get white only 16. Was, we didn't even have the pins on the big chip for more. No, let alone the room. Right, yeah. Like that. And also, it was a four, you know, you have four bit RAM. How many colors?
to pass FCC, and then they changed the rules. And I, I'm, I'm talking way out of that. That's, 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 that's certainly not the 64. Maybe the 20. 20 I was thinking the Palo Alto, yeah, so I, I wasn't right. involved in the, in yeah, the, I think the details of that. The, the 20 is it did, never, had a, never had an internal audit. Actually, the modulator, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Okay. yeah. It does. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's, that's what I, that was my understanding as well. At some point, somebody paid money to the FCC. And right. That's my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty clear. And, and then Mitsumi paid money to say, yeah, we'd like to be qualified to be part of this match. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. So, um, we've got another, I guess, 13 minutes or something like that. Um, maybe this is time for audience questions. Yeah. Uh, as much fun as it is to... Uh, uh, yeah, there's usually, there's usually a half an hour for questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what could be... Uh, hang on. Sorry, here you go. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I, I looked at illustrations of the, of the die, the two, the big and the big two. Yeah. It's obvious that the density is much greater on the latter. Expected. What kind of geometries were you able to produce at that time? I heard earlier that the yields were on the order of 20 to 30 percent in initial run, and I know this is a consumer product, so that's <coughs> expensive. But it looks like everything's crammed down to the last micrometer to get that uh, it big was. yield created. Yeah. So this is the kind of question you get at VCF. Right. What, 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 what kind of rules were you doing? Like 1.8 micron or something like that? Like, yeah. I don't know. It was, it was point. And this is funny. We, this is before metric. Okay? Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> it was 0.3 mils or 0.35. And then we would do a 10% shrink. Shrink, right. Okay, so I think it was point, the, the smallest geometry we could make was 0.35 mils, which I can't do. Somebody look that up. Yeah, I can't do the micron in my head. It's, it's <laughs> be, that's, I've forgotten how the day's going to be like Because four. 254 oh, is, yeah. is, is it's micron. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever it is. Um, so 0.35 was the smallest so, one we could So do. this was so big it was still an imperial unit. So I think <laughs> 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 to sum this up. Well, maybe going in the other direction, did you, did you, when you started the chip design out, did you work for, did you work from geometry because that comes out of manufacturing? What kind of transistor budget are you looking to have to work with that? Okay, that you, you uh, that's where you try to create block structures so that you could manage that. Okay, I knew how much RAM would be, what space that would take up. I knew how much a counter would be. So you would do an architectural overview of this to say, okay, I can only make this chip, I think it was 210 on the side or something like that, 210 mil on the side. Right? Um, so we start laying these things out, and you do it for enough years, you get a sense of, okay, a counter is this big, and I need this many counters. So you can start to lay out, just like you would lay out a house. You go, okay, this is how much are we for the living room? Or, is, or a printed circuit board. Right. I mean, so you get you get a sense of it from that perspective. And um, that's where we, we did it that way. And I knew approximately, or before starting, I would be in that rough range of where I would be. So it was really ex experience that told me how big I can make it. But again, it's all, it sells. So I knew how big a cell was. And, and the longer it went on, the more you do. You right. Know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, or, were most of the transistors minimum size, or were they all over the map? Most of the internal stuff was mostly in minimum size. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't until you got to like clock generators and the yeah, analog right. sections. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so that's why you didn't have as much thing you know, as we were about checking the transistor sizes. I never wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they had to make sure that the logic was the logic. And you didn't, you tried to get away from that, and you knew you had the speed to get through it. One of the changes Diorio slid into the big chip for us then is we found a game that had flip the mode. I don't want to say flip it to PAL mode, even though it was a new chip. It was some, something you or I would not think somebody would do on the fly. And the transistor was a small transistor, and it took almost the entire line to switch. And so you saw the RAS get skinnier and skinnier and then finally go away. And of course, it ruined every DVD of the thing. Right. And Diorio looked at it and said, this. Nobody ever thought it'd be you switched yeah. dynamically. You know, I mean, he made it into a 207 or something. Right, yeah, some yeah. big transistor to drive it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we ride it. I mean, that's the kind of things you don't think about. Somebody, there's always so somebody, somebody in software poking it. What would this look like? Right. Okay. And you don't think about it. And then we got stuck going, and if you don't do it too correctly, because for some reason right. our big chip acted different, 
then you're not compatible. So we had to go in oh. and make it so you could plot these on the that's, plot. That's, 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 yeah, it, in, in, in many respects, I feel like I'm responsible for this. <laughs> as, you know, as a member of the teaching uh, world and so forth, uh, what, our, what our students do is, you know, we give them an assignment, uh, they code it, they run it, it doesn't work, they randomly change it, they run it again, and so forth. And as soon as it works, uh, they turn it in and they move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure it's a similar sort of thing. It's like, oh, this is a good idea to do. No. Did it work? Why, yes. Okay, ship it. <laughs> oh, I, I remember the three seconds it took me to make a decision of things and then move on. Yeah, yeah. we, we yeah. simply didn't spend. And we weren't IBM yeah. where you needed to call a committee meeting and, right. and, and do that kind of thing. Yeah. That, was, that was the fun of it. It's the fun of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, everybody was a startup. I mean, really, even though Conrad was a little bit bigger because I had the calculating business, but because it was a startup, you, you had freedom. I mean, you, you got to make decisions. Yeah, it yeah, was never absolutely. a committee. So one thing I always wondered about is like I understand the limits of the four bits leading to the sixteen colors, but how were the sixteen colors decided upon? Right. But <laughs> <laughs> well, because I mean, if, you, if you look at like the, the history of games, it, the colors are used in very different ways. But right? there's a kind of black background period. There's this kind of embossed period where you use the, the light. The it, was light the, it was the it was it was somewhat serendipitous. Okay. okay, in that. There were certain ratios that would fit and that would work. <laughs> and honestly, this was sort of like driven by the hardware. And some looked like crap. Uh, yeah, I, but I didn't. I mean, I had eight to choose from, and like, okay, this is how these resistors. And there's enough separation from one to the next, and from a perspective of the manufacturing, they would be about always the same. So it was a situation. I knew I needed the primary, so I had to fix those. And then after that, it came down to what was left. So is it yeah, phase angles that would play nice together? Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. And, yeah. and enough room for the ones left. Yeah. yeah. And so it was serendipity. Those, you know, once you get through the primary, it's like, okay, what can I squeeze in here? Yeah. Part, part of the trick also is you have to remember this was aiming at NTSC, and, and you know, there's a similar story for PAL. It's e equally twisted and so forth. But RGB is a modern invention, yes. right? At yeah. the time. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's what is it, why I use the space or whatever, and it's nothing like anything you ever want to design as a human being. There's a whole bunch of, you know, how can we make this and, and do it all. So trying to get a pure color, you know, just red, is ferociously difficult. And if you look at all of the machines of that time that would display on normal, uh, none of them have red, really. None of them have blue, really. It's all weird combinations it's, of all this the days when TVs had tint controls too, so you would make yeah. the colors be right. whatever you want. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 I mean, it's called never the same color. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a very good reason. <laughs> right? I like it. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, when I first read about it, as I said, I wanted to put color in my head. I went to the library and read about all this. I went, you are kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, here's, I mean, as a digital guy, you go, why isn't there an R and a B and a G and I could just change the way we have it now? It's a much more sensible solution to the problem. But, you know, going from black and white to color, and this is how they squeeze color in and be backwards compatible with the old color sets. Now, I think the person who came up with this demented, but that's what they came up with. <laughs> well, it was actually backwards compatibility. Yes, correct. Right. It was, it was yes. how, do you, how do you broadcast color? Make it work on black. Black and white. So it would impact. The same right. shimmering problem I had. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. 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 Similar. 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 Yeah. And they built in different relationships to try and counteract those. Exactly. Yeah. So, but so it was really a, a okay. Once I get red, yellow, green, and, and a few of those blue, then it was like okay, what what's where can I squeeze in? And yeah. Yeah. Cyan came up. Orange. Yeah. Orange is problematic. So close to the yeah. color too. Yes. Yeah. Right. So it was it was. Uh, I know I needed the few and whatever fell out after that was sort of where they had the Just just compare the colors available on the C sixty four to that on the Apple II, and you'll suddenly realize what you know paradise. <laughs> you can draw a picture by comparison. By comparison. <laughs> I just wanted to add real quick that uh, in the broadcast world there there were certain colors that were illegal that would tweak out television sets and red was actually one of them. It has to be a, a certain uh, frequency, or otherwise, TV sets. They, they used kind of to tell them not to wear red yeah. suits and wear, even Santa Claus right. outfits on TV. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, is, this is like a brown note, but a visual thing or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, in fact, um, I have 
is history. So the uh, let's see, before the opening credits run in Blade Runner, there's this, this red thing that comes on. And it's taken about 30 years before I could actually see that on any of the TVs that I, I saw. It. And it's exactly the red. So you confirmed what I was expecting all along. <laughs> red is out to get you. Right? <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, usually you guys got a lot of questions. Just shout them out. <laughs> You've covered a lot. Yeah. 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 Let's see, I'm trying to think if I have any, any questions. We talk a lot. We, yeah. we talk, yeah. Albert and I have talked some six, seven hours now, and, and, <laughs> and it's always new stuff we're talking about. So yeah. we're pretty it's much exhausted. Right. We played the, did you know this guy? We yeah, played that right, game. Yeah. And so, I mean, uh, there was another guy, uh, Jim Rickfield, who was right. also mentioned him. He was a guy who really helped me with all the logic of the flow between the, the background and the sprites. He was really instrumental in getting get that right. So, and, and you guys were working without ERCs or DRCs, electrical rule checks. Or no. and, and this is real important. They would draw a schematic, and there was nothing that said, yeah, we made the chip like you made the schematic. Right. It, it was all hand-checked during that time. Yep. And when Jim Rickfield came back to Commodore, uh, somebody pulled me aside as he walked down the hall and said, his sprite collision logic worked the first time. You know, <laughs> and that, that was just wow. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was, it was just, you had to keep things simple, but yet keep them It, it had to work. It had to work. I mean, you, you really didn't have any choice, but you couldn't get, I mean, FPGAs are so wonderful now. I mean, you just try things and, oh, that doesn't work, let me try something else. And, and you never had that luxury. Um, another story about, when, when I left Congo, okay, they, they gave me a very large pair of dice as I was leaving. Why would they give me a big dice? Because what I would say is after after about a month of checking it, okay, I go, let's, let's just roll the dice and get this thing the hell out of here. <laughs> it's, it's tempting, too. I, I've watched chip designers wear out a brilliant person after three months, and they're, they're like, yeah, just beat up, and you go, roll the dice and see what happens. Because I'm tired of checking this thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so we got into a thing where we started revving the chips. We went took well. Mm -hmm. In all fairness, chips got more smaller and yeah. more complicated. Mm -hmm. But we were starting to do three and four revs to get chips to. Well, yeah. Work. I mean, it, it, you, it, as your complexity goes up, you have no yeah. choice for that because you're trying to do more. And then that's. I mean, I was looking at as we were designing computers. Help us design computers. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And it was. It was. Uh, but it was it was fun because I mean, back then you think about it, even today, I mean, you can you can do a custom chip today or a uh, CU Geeks kind of thing for a hundred thousand dollars or less, really. Okay, custom yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there's yeah. and there's free programs going on too. Yeah. Google yeah. will yeah. Yeah. shoot your chips yeah. for you. Yeah. So, but back then, I mean, the cost of producing that even was was in the quarter million dollars for a right. half lot or a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was. Crazy, and that's why I was like, okay, yeah, the everything really you get it right, but mm -hmm. it was a shot in the dark, and you just had to go, okay, I'm going for it, you know. And it, and it, and it, it was some sleepless nights between when you said oh. ship it to when it came out. We, we, we would take we would take the chip guys out to the bar and just like yeah, yeah, yeah. sit down, and drink. You can't do anything. Yeah. 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 It was it was nerve like being pregnant. It really was, but there was a pride in the fact that you, know, you spent all that time, and, and it was always that pride of saying, okay. I'm going to get to work in, in one or two reps. I mean, right. And that was always the, the benchmark of a, of, a, of a chip designer at the time as they getting to work in that period of time. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it was truly remarkable. It was fun yes. stuff, you know. Thank God I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just did, the last chip I did, um, uh, I did a chip about three years ago. I still, I'm still working, so I'm getting consulting. Okay. And it's a whole different world. Everything is standard cells, or I mean, this was, had some analog stuff in it too. But again, it's like with all the EPA and checking ERC and simulation capability. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, the only thing that didn't work the first time was some of the analog stuff needed to be tweaked. Okay. So you had another rev to tweak the analog stuff. But because you have so many tools at your disposal, you, you can get it almost. If you don't, then you're really not using the tool. Yeah. You know? Well, the stakes have, the stakes have also gone up. Right? Oh, you know, a really quarter of a million dollars or whatever. Like, you know, what is that? You spend that on one mask now or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, 
Now, one of the tricks we, we were doing that the chip guys was, we called it a one, two, three, where there were six layers total in these chips. And they would divide the lot into two and only do one, two, three on, on the whole thing and save it. And so if they had fixes that they could do in the top three layers, they would do that, pull out the one, two, threes, add four, five, six to it, and run it again. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I had a four, five, six save my life. It, it, it <laughs> one us, you know, and literally saved us. Yeah, so you to, yeah that would be definitely. Um, well, that's why we have data rates. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and we had data rates the next year. It, it was pretty funny how, you know, when people ask me questions, well, why didn't you do this? And it literally, it didn't exist for another year or another two, but it existed pretty soon after. But, but things were moving fast back then. Oh, well, that was the fun part of doing it. That's the thing. Yeah. Really was. Well, speaking of moving fast, I think we are officially over uh, okay. time at this point. But this is wonderful. Can we thank our, uh, our panelists? <laughs>